At last, the long-awaited Starship landing footage has been released, unveiling unexpected details, including previously unknown issues with the fuel tank and heat shield. Not everything went perfectly, but even setbacks bring valuable lessons as SpaceX continues refining its systems. Next, we'll look at SpaceX's growing role in launching Amazon's Kuiper satellites following a newly announced mission. And after months of silence, Rocket Lab has made its return with a fresh electron launch. Let's go ahead and dive into all these updates on today's episode of Great SpaceX. It's safe to say we've once again witnessed Starship's undeniable success, a triumph that echoes the glory of Flight 10 just two months ago, yet rises to an even greater level of achievement. This latest mission showcased not only Starship's immense power, but also the precision of its controlled descent and landing, painting a breathtaking picture over the vast Indian Ocean. However, as spectacular as that event was, SpaceX's live broadcast left many viewers longing for a better perspective. The ocean waves caused the camera to tilt throughout the descent, and the landing moment itself was partially obscured. But as we know, SpaceX always captures extensive data and footage during every mission, and they usually release clearer, edited clips later for analysis and for the public to enjoy. True to form, SpaceX recently shared two new stunning videos of the Starship landing process on X, captioned, Final Descent and Splashdown of Starship on Flight 11 captured by the SpaceX recovery team in the Indian Ocean. These clips offered a far clearer view of Starship's re-entry and landing sequence, providing valuable insight into what happened during the final stages of the flight. The first video covers the full descent from Starship still in space through the ignition of the landing burn all the way to splashdown and its gradual tilt upon contact with the ocean. The second clip, filmed from a much closer range focuses on the landing burn itself and gives us an even better look at the heat shield's condition during those final moments. Upon reviewing this new footage, it quickly became clear that Ship 38's heat shield was not as flawless as previously thought. While it performed significantly better than that of Flight 10, small issues such as coolant leakage and oxidation were still visible, though notably reduced. The most apparent leak occurred near the aft section, specifically where the main liquid oxygen tank meets the engine compartment. Department. In that region, venting gas could be seen escaping with significant force. But that was not the only concerning detail. Just moments before the vehicle touched the ocean surface, a brief but intense flash of flame was visible near the nose cone and payload section. This immediately raised questions about whether a more serious problem might have occurred. According to several independent analyses, it appears that a portion of the fuel tank was damaged during re-entry, which may have led to a small leak and subsequent ignition. The most likely sources of the problem are either the header tank or the main tank. Observers have pointed out that some of the protective heat shield tiles in that area had been intentionally removed, leaving parts of the fuel tank exposed. This decision may have been part of a stress test to examine the tank's resilience under extreme conditions. However, the combination of re-entry heat, aerodynamic pressure, and structural vibration might have caused the metal to crack. The leaked fuel could have escaped into the payload bay and ignited upon exposure to high heat. Thankfully, this did not result in a catastrophic failure. The presence of nitrogen-charged COPVs likely prevented a chain reaction or explosion, since nitrogen is non-flammable. Even so, just a small amount of leaked methane or liquid oxygen was enough to create the visible flare. Fortunately, Starship continued its descent and landed successfully despite the anomaly. This incident, however, highlights an issue that must be addressed urgently. Future V3 missions will involve far more complex objectives, including payload deployment, Mechazilla-assisted landings, orbital refilling demonstrations, and construction related operations. Any vulnerability in the fuel tank structure could jeopardize these critical missions or even lead to disaster. Further observations also revealed that the main liquid oxygen tank may have sustained minor punctures near the end of re-entry. During the most intense heating phase, a sudden brightening of plasma and visible wrinkling on the tank surface were recorded clear indicators of internal pressure loss. When SpaceX's recovery footage was later analyzed, small holes in that area were 
were visible, confirming that the tank's outer wall had been indeed breached. While the nose cone leak appeared relatively minor, the damage to the liquid oxygen tank is more serious and will require closer examination. Maintaining the tank's pressure integrity during the extreme heat and stress of atmospheric reentry is vital for future operational flights. These lessons will undoubtedly play a major role in shaping the engineering refinements for the upcoming Starship V3 generation. Moving on to the heat shield itself, the new videos confirmed that coolant leaks still occur, leading to light oxidation patterns similar to those seen on Flight 10, though the effects were far less severe this time. This indicates that while SpaceX's recent design improvements, particularly the crunch wrap system, have reduced the problem, they have not yet solved it completely. The crunch wrap approach, designed to seal and reinforce the tile edges, seems to have worked well overall, but heat still managed to penetrate certain small gaps, causing localized failures in the cooling system. The resulting leaks produced faint white patches across the surface, evidence of where oxidation and discoloration occurred. While these were less dramatic than before, they appeared more evenly spread across the vehicle, suggesting a broader but shallower pattern of heating. This ongoing experimentation shows that SpaceX still has significant work to do before achieving a fully reliable and reusable heat shield system. Future flights, particularly with the V3 variant, will likely feature even greater changes to the tile materials, cooling systems, and mounting techniques. Full reusability depends heavily on this system's performance, and it remains one of the most technically challenging components of Starship. That said, the improvements seen on Flight 11 are clear signs of progress. The reduced discoloration and better overall integrity prove that the crunch wrap modification was an effective step forward. It'll likely be further optimized in future design. As SpaceX transitions to the Starship V3 architecture, we can expect the metallic tiles to be fully phased out in favor of a more resilient and maintainable ceramic composite. Early visuals of S-39, the first ship V3, already suggests that its heat shield has been strengthened and refined for better durability. Despite the remaining imperfections, the heat shield's performance on this flight was impressive. Key areas such as the catching point and aft flaps remained well protected throughout re-entry, which is a crucial milestone for SpaceX's long-term plan to eventually return and catch starships at Starbase using Mechazilla. Let's continue to support this incredible journey of innovation and perseverance. If you believe in SpaceX's relentless drive to improve, let me know by commenting keep improving down below and stay tuned as we await the next major chapter in Starship's evolution when the first parts of S-39 begin stacking for flight. Now, as we shift gears, let's talk about another milestone that recently added to the excitement. The Falcon 9 Kuiper mission took flight almost side by side with Starship Flight 11, making it an electrifying week not just for SpaceX but for the entire spaceflight community. At precisely 9.58 p.m. Eastern on October 13th, a Falcon 9 rocket lifted off from SLC-40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying 24 Amazon Kuiper satellites into orbit. Interestingly, this mission had been delayed to align with the Starship schedule. Originally planned for October 9th, the launch faced several weather-related postponements before proceeding successfully. The mission represented SpaceX's third Project Kuiper launch and the sixth dedicated flight overall aimed at deploying Amazon's broadband satellite network. Once complete, this constellation will consist of roughly 3,200 satellites operating in low Earth orbit, forming Amazon's answer to SpaceX's Starlink. With this latest mission, 153 Kuiper satellites have now reached space, marking steady progress toward that ambitious goal. To put this into perspective, the remaining satellites will be deployed through more than 70 additional launches conducted by several different rockets, including SpaceX's Falcon 9, Ariane Space's Ariane 6, Blue Origin's New Glenn, and ULA's Atlas V and Vulcan Centaur. The satellites currently orbit an operational altitude of around 289 miles or 465 kilometers. For Falcon 9 missions, deployment typically occurs about 56 to 57 minutes after launch. Amazon representatives wrote in a mission statement, From there, we perform initial satellite health checks and prepare to raise the satellites to their assigned altitude of 392 miles or 630 kilometers, where they will be fully commissioned as part of our operational satellite constellation. So far, SpaceX has played a significant role in helping Kuiper reach this stage. Out of the six primary Kuiper launches to date, three have been conducted by Falcon 9, contributing 72 of the 153 satellites currently in orbit. 
orbit. This highlights SpaceX's reliability and growing influence in the commercial launch market, especially when compared to vehicles like New Glenn, Vulcan, and Ariane 6, which have not yet launched their first Kuiper payloads. In contrast, ULA has relied on the Atlas V, a rocket that is nearing retirement, to maintain its part in the project. And finally, to close out today's coverage, let's turn our attention to Rocket Lab's latest achievement. On October 14th at 12.33 p.m. Eastern, Rocket Lab successfully launched its Electron rocket from New Zealand to deliver an Earth observation satellite for the Japanese company Synspective. The mission went exactly as planned, with the Electron deploying the Strix satellite into a 362-mile high orbit just over 50 minutes after liftoff. The payload part of Synspective's Strix radar imaging satellite series required a specially designed arrowhead payload fairing to accommodate its larger frame. The company Company described this particular spacecraft as the first of a new generation of satellites for its low Earth orbit constellation that provides high frequency, high resolution Earth observation data for disaster response and management, national security, and environmental monitoring. To date, seven Strix satellites have been launched successfully on seven different Electron missions. Synspective plans to conduct about 20 more launches in the coming years to complete its full constellation. This latest flight marked Rocket Lab's 15th launch of 2025 and its 73rd overall. However, despite this achievement, the company's launch cadence this year has been inconsistent, with several months such as January, April, July, and September passing without a single launch. The previous mission occurred back in late August, which shows that there's still room for improvement in maintaining a more consistent operational rhythm. Nevertheless, with both SpaceX and Rocket Lab continuing to advance their respective missions, the commercial launch landscape remains as dynamic as ever. The next few months, will likely bring even more milestones, and it'll be exciting to see how these companies refine their cadence and technology as they push further into 2026. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.